Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in the last session, we saw that how we can uh, download and install Salesforce uh, CLI into the system. And then we also saw how we can install Salesforce extension pack into VS Code. I hope you guys have already done that. So in this session, I'll be showing you how you can basically um, authorize your Salesforce org in your VS Code, how you can create a project, how you can retrieve components from the Salesforce org, or how you can deploy your changes from VS Code to your Salesforce org, okay? So let's just go ahead and first create a project in your VS Code. And we are creating the project first so that like, you know, when uh, we are trying to fetch the components from the Salesforce org to your VS Code, you would exactly know where your components are going to get placed, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm creating a project with manifest. So there are two options in VS Code to create a project. The first one is create a project. The next one is create a project with manifest. So I'm creating uh, a project with manifest because uh, when you select the option of creating a project with manifest, that actually creates your project along with all the required folders and also package.xml so that based on your requirement of fetching the uh, components from the Salesforce org, you can make amendments to your package.xml. Okay. So, okay. So here there are some, a few shortcuts which you can use. For example, I'll be using control shift P in order to open this panel. And then all I have to do is I have to, uh, search for this one, SFDX colon create project with manifest. So I'll just click on this one. And here I will choose whatever, uh, like, you know, as per, as per the kind of like, you know, uh, project you're creating, you can choose. So here I'll be choosing standard project and I'll give the project a name. Okay. So let's say demo and then I'll hit on enter. Here you have to choose the location where you want to keep your uh, project. So here it is so once you have created your project right you can see that on the left side you can see this project got created and you can see this is the this is nothing but this is the like you know folder structure that you'll have and it will have all the components folder already created the only difference is that uh, you will not have any components inside it because we haven't fetched anything right so if you open and like you know click and see all these folders it's empty for now um okay so and also, as I said, right, that it will have your package.xml. So if you click on the manifest, you can see your package.xml, okay? And it will already have some, um, like, you know, few of the components tag already included. And uh, so these are, the, these are the basic tags. Let's say, for example, if I want to include, one second, let's say if I want to include um, custom object, right? I would include another tab specifying the name as custom object. And then I, I can include any object what I want, or I can just include star so that it will fetch all the available objects. Okay. So this is the first step that you need to do. Now you, we have created a project. The second thing is that I want to connect one of my Salesforce org with this project. Okay. So that I can work on my components in VS code, and then I can deploy my changes to the Salesforce org. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to connect my VS code with my Salesforce org. So to do that, you need to authorize an org. So again, I'll be pressing on control shift and P and I'll click on authorize an org. Okay, so here there are a few options. So this one will actually take you to login.salesforce.com. This one will take you to login.salesforce.com. And then this one will take you to test.salesforce.com and this one is custom login URL. Let's say if you're working on a separate developer org, you can use this option, right? For example, if you're working on any sandboxes, okay, so then you can, if you already know that like, you know, the URL that you use for logging in, if that is test.salesforce.com, then you can use this one. So I am going to use, um, I'm going to use um, one of my developer orgs. So I'll be uh, choosing this option, custom URL. Okay. And let me just go ahead and uh, first take my URL. So um, one second, let me see if I have already logged in. Um, I think I had, no worries, I will just
what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the custom domain that uh, uh, my one of the one of my play, playgrounds has. Okay. So in your case, if you're working already working on a project, right? So that will mainly for the sandboxes that will mainly have test.salesforce.com. So rather than doing all of this, you can simply like, you know, when you're creating, when you're authorizing the org, you can simply choose sandbox and then you can log in. So here I'll just go and find my custom domain. So here it is. Okay. So I'll go here again, control shift and P, authorize an org, then custom URL, HTTPS, and then uh, I'll type in the custom domain that I have, and then I'll just simply hit enter. So here you can see because I had already logged in and I have saved my username and password. That is why it pre-filled all this information. Otherwise, you would have to enter your username and password and then hit on login. So once you do this and go back to your VS code, it will show you that. See, it, it, it showed you, right, that authorize an org successfully ran. So now you have authorized your Salesforce org. The next thing what you want to do is you want to fetch the components from your Salesforce org, right? So let's say this, this package.xml. So first thing is that whatever I include in my package.xml. So after like, you know, preparing my package.xml, if I try to retrieve the components, retrieve source in manifest from org, if I try to retrieve the components from the org into my project, only those components are going to get retrieved, which are included in your package.xml, okay? So for example, let's say, um, just because my org is, it's not a complete new org, so let me just try and fetch. So retrieve source in manifest from the org. So the moment I do this, whatever components I have available, right? For example, classes, right? Apex classes. So let's just go ahead and check if I have anything in Apex classes. I don't have, right? because I haven't retrieved. So once I retrieve, right, after that, if I'll go and check the classes folder, I'll see some of the classes, not some of the classes, all the classes, because I have put a star over here, right? So all the classes which are available in my org will get loaded over here, right? So let me just try and do this. It will take some time because there are other things which are included, so, okay. So here you can see these, these classes, right? So these are the classes which I have in my org, okay? So these classes are already there in my org. The moment I retrieved, it showed me all the classes. It loaded all the classes, right? So now let's say, for example, so this is, this is how you retrieve, okay? If you want to retrieve LWC component or if you want to retrieve a custom object uh, or if you, let's say, if you want to receive, uh, retrieve a permission set or let's say a profile, you have to include that particular tag, okay? <coughs> So for example, profile, right? So, and if you don't know about the tags, you, you just have to Google it. For example, if I tell you to retrieve a profile over here, right? And if you don't know how to prepare a tag for the profile, then you need to go to Google and then you need to search. For example, for the profile, you need to just mention the name as profile. And then here you need to mention the profile name, like, you know, which profile you want to retrieve into your project. Okay, so this was about how you can retrieve your components from Salesforce org. Now let's just go ahead and see how you can deploy. So I'll deploy something wherein you can see the change that like, you know, so, okay. So let me just go ahead and um, see that if my account object has any custom fields, if not, let's just go ahead and create one so that I can show you the changes that like, you know, whatever I'll, whatever changes I'll make in VS code, if that gets deployed, to my org or not. So let me just go to accounts and see fields and relationships. There would be, so for example, this one, right? Onboarding status. So if I open this field, okay, and let, let okay, so this field, right? So what I'll do is first I'll retrieve account object in my project. So let's just do this custom object, custom, object and then i'll write in here account there is there's a catch over here if you are trying to retrieve a standard object you have to mention the name the star will not work if i include a star here and then i try to retrieve it is only going to retrieve the custom objects okay so i'll fetch account here so let's just go ahead and retrieve this 
and then we'll see that what and all it fetches along with the account object basically it will it should fetch your field your record types and if there are any compact layouts so here we can see it it already uh, loaded the information so here we have fields list views record types and web links okay and this is my object file so what i needed to do is i wanted to make some changes in one of my custom fields so i'll just click on fields and uh, let me search for that field onboarding status right so this was my field okay so let's say this this field is marked as required as false over here so if i go to the org you can see that this is not required so let's say if i make some changes into this particular fields file in vs code and i deploy then that those changes should be reflected over here right so i'll just go ahead and i'll make it as true and let me uh one second this is something else okay let me now when you right click on the file right you can just hit on deploy this source to org you can either do it from here or if you want to if you want you can also right click from here and then deploy your changes okay so i'll just this is more comfortable to me so i'll just do this let's just go ahead and refresh it and see if the changes are reflected here or not here you can see right this was false now it's true because i made some changes to this field and i deployed that to this or so likewise whatever changes you are doing in any of the components let it be a um, apex class let it be a um, record page let it be a layout any changes whatever you are doing in your vs code once you save it you need to save it before you deploy it otherwise the changes will not be reflected in the org okay so whatever changes you are doing all you have to do is you have to just right click on that particular file and then you need to deploy it to the org so that way your changes will be available in the org okay so this was all about how you can create a project in your vs code how you can retrieve how you can basically first authorize your salesforce org and then how you can retrieve the components how you can make changes and how you can deploy those changes to your salesforce org okay so in our next session we'll see more about how we can directly create files over here and how we can deploy those changes in our salesforce org Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.